there is one band who has captured the spirit of the last few years, then it has to be Oasis. Their attitude, look, and above all their music has been instrumental to their success, ensuring their rightful place in millions of CD collections worldwide. But 15 years ago, not one of them could imagine the position they would hold now as the saviours of rock and roll. Peggy Sweeney grew up in Swinford, County Mayo, and in her teens travelled from Ireland to Manchester in the hope of finding work. Not only did she find work, she found her future husband, Tommy Gallagher, a builder from County Meath. After marrying, they had a son, Paul. Sixteen months later, on the 29th of May 1967, Noel Gallagher was born. Five years later, on the 21st of September 1972, his brother, William John Paul, known as Liam, followed. Although the boys had a strong mother figure and their Catholic religion, life for all of the family was turbulent and money was scarce. Their love of football and music eclipsed their schooling. A lot of them weren't going to do well at school, um, or just had no interest in school. Noel, Noel told me he used to spend most of his time just gazing out the window at the playing field, you know. So, and, he, and that's if he got into school, because most of the time he, he would bunk off, same as Liam. So when they left, it was either football or music. They grew up in the 80s, a lot of unemployment around Thatcherism, you know, so basically buy a bag, a bag of spliff and go and sit in the park and, you know. Do that. Following school, the boys worked with their father on building sites, but neither saw a future laying concrete floors for a living. Noel decided this wasn't going to be enough for him, and his love of music led him to start hanging around local Manchester bands, such as the Inspiral Carpets. Noel came to a lot of our gigs in the early days, and when he heard that needed a new singer, he, he put his name forward to audition, which I remember at the time thinking it was quite funny because he just, he didn't look like a front man, you know what I mean, he was like, this little scally from Burnage. The first time I, I ever met Noel, he, he, he had the same haircut as Clint Boone, which was a bit bizarre because those was the worst, I mean, personally I thought it was the worst haircut I'd ever seen, but he actually looked like, he looked like a young, uh, small Clint Boone. But yeah, we tried him out, we'd give him an audition and, um, he could sing, I mean, he, he, he was a songwriter, he had songs that he was writing in his bedroom and stuff. But uh, it, it just wasn't the sort of, he didn't have the vocal style that we needed. But we really liked him, you know. So we just said to Noel, come be a roadie. And, you know, when we're not on tour, you can do other stuff like sending t-shirts out or answering fan mail and doing whatever needs to do now. He'd be popping in quite a bit, picking up his strings for the Inspiral Carpets. And drumsticks, dropping off all their amplifiers, they broke, blown up to get fixed. Um, and, you know, he's a musician, so he'd, he'd take time out to sort of sit around, play the guitars, have a chat, chew the fat about it, find out about different pedals, different amps. And he'd spend a lot of time jamming as well. Like he'd be jamming um, the Burt Bacharach stuff and the Beatles stuff that, obviously, you know, he was very influential to him. So he was always playing. You know, you'd go around to his house and he'd be sat in his bed playing his little electric guitar through a little amp that I'd given him, a little AC30 box. Um, and his girlfriend would be sat in the front room telling him to turn it down and that. He always impressed me because he was very, very interested in music. He, he, was, he came to basically, you know, any gig that we had on that was of any interest he came to and very interested in music. Noel's dreams of being part of the music industry had started to become true, and tales of his rock and roll escapades and adventures had made their way back to Burnage. Never one to be outdone by his younger brother, Liam had aspirations of his own. Liam just wanted to be a rock and roll star. You know, I remember when he told the people at the doll what, you know, they asked him, you know, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna what are you gonna do? And so, I'm going to be a fucking rock and roll star. Why are we now? Why are we now? 
Liam was a very memorable character, really, because of his his demeanour, his style, his jeans, his trainers, the way he sat. Um, very nonchalant, very cocky. We got to know each other just through sort of hanging out, really. He used to live around the corner. We used to come around, watch telly, watch videos, listen to music. Uh, we were into Small Faces, Stones, Beatles, um, Crosby, Stills, Nash, Young. We, we all knew Liam and we knew that he was this uh, good looking kid that was like, just destined to be a pop star, even though he wasn't in the band, we were all like, oh, he needs to be in a band, that kid, you know what I mean? He looks like, he looks the part. Liam had had similar thoughts and started to make his dream of being a rock and roll star come true. So Noel told us one day that Liam had phoned say he was in a band. Liam had hijacked this band off some other lead singer, basically. Well, Griggsy knew Bonehead, and it was those two who formed a group called Rain, and they brought in a guy called Tony McCarroll on drums. Then they started looking for a singer and came across Liam Gallagher. Liam came round to Bonehead's house to audition and Bonehead's girlfriend was in the bath at the time and Liam came round and sang and then left and the girlfriend came out and said, whoever that was just sang like a bird, he's amazing. The new lineup rehearsed for a few months and managed to come up with four songs that they premiered at the boardwalk. Noel came to watch to see what his kid brother was up to. The guys in his brother's band thought that he'd be a great manager because of his contacts. So they basically asked Noel if he managed them and he said, no, I won't manage, I'll join. And, you know, we'll do, I'll be the songwriter um, and we'll make it happen that way. And um, I think he got involved pretty much as soon as he got back from America, he started getting involved with them and jamming with them, writing, you know, writing the songs. And, taking control of it, the way he does. <laughs> I mean, they were very dedicated. They, they, they would rehearse every day. I mean, it was very much like that. I remember Bonehead saying to me, there was one day when, I think he got kicked out of his flat or something, you know, and he had to miss rehearsals because he had nowhere to live, so he had to find somewhere to live. The next day he came in, and Noel just went mad at him. But he said, well, I got kicked out of my flat. Don't bloody care, you know, you come here, you know. Rain were now in a stronger position. They had four members who could play their instruments, one of which had a few songs and a charismatic lead singer. With this new lineup, it was decided a name change was in order. Taking their name from an Inspiral Carpets tour poster, the band named themselves Oasis after the Oasis Centre in Swindon. They were now ready to take their place in the prolific and creative Manchester music scene. There's a guy into music in the early 90s, that was, probably wasn't a better place in the world to be than Manchester. Uh, the Inspiral Carpets were big, the Charlottesons, Stone Roses, Happy Mondays, everyone, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a big scene. James, Northside, Mock Turtles. A lot of hip-hop, a lot of electro. It was centred around a place like the Hacienda and, you know, other venues. Mm -hmm. 